Hello, welcome back to Tarot by Andy. Thank you for being here. This is my vibrational reading. Please do your own research for entertainment purposes and allegedly. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and thank you for being here. And thank you for the super thanks. So it looks like uh, has H, good old H, is about to go on a media blizzard. Yes, I got my notes. Yeah, my notes. People don't like, some people don't like my notes, but here you go. I love my notes. Because I know I don't want to leave anything out. I'm not. I'm not. Br I'm not brilliant. I'm not super high IQ, and I can't remember everything. So here we go. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not. I'm not the smartest tool in the shed all the time. There you go. My little self-deprecating humor there. <clears throat> here we go. Um, media blizzard. Yeah, he's going on a media blizzard. Um, he definitely wants to try to break the internet. I feel. Uh, that is mass communication. When it comes to doing a media type blizzard uh, angle, you know, there's the reality, there's the agenda, then there's the per perception of reality. He's basically doing an agenda setting, uh, which is to hold an intense um, media attention. So he really, I think he, you know, like I said, he might want to, he might be attempting to break the internet like what his wife did a, a few years ago. She thought she'd break the internet. She didn't, but she tried. All right, she got a lot of attention. I will give her that. Uh, they they think they're it's an important uh, topic and or with individuals involved okay and the third thing is they tell us what's important and it does have a powerful influence so he's really aiming for that as we know it's just common sense just getting some info out there and as a narcissist a wife that he has there <clears throat> I'm sure she's directing it just like she directed Doria. Doria, when she paused before she started speaking, it's because she's an actor. She was hired as like an actor. She needed her lines. She had to pause to get into character. That's what that was because as a narcissist, her, being her daughter, you are the actor in her show, a puppet, a servant, an admirer, a fan, a stooge. You are a bank account many times and a womb. Yes, they need to be mothered. They're very, they're very immature. They need nurturing and you are to nurture their needs. Very, very, very needy. Um, this is how they, and then they, they're not wired for openness, okay? There is no openness with them. This is how they can blend in easily. They will not be forthright. They don't do forthright. They have a strong aversion to feeling vulnerable. Being open, honest, and forthright exposes them uh, to the world, and they're afraid of hearing no. They want to hear no, like a toddler. Don't tell me no. Very vulnerable, very wounded. It's because they were raised with an invalidating environment of hot and cold, you know, praise and punishment, praise and punishment. So that's why they're like that. Um, that's that whole shame rejection. That's the root of a narcissist. So Harry's acting very narcissistic. He's very kind of acting very covert narcissist, I would say. So this agenda setting theories by has, basically. Uh, these hidden agendas are hardwired. Uh, they're sneaky strategies on a daily basis. Daily, okay? Daily. It's not just once in a while. You're not a part-time narcissist or part-time toxic or part-time manipulator. It's a full-time job. All right. So they're very meticulous in their fantasy plans, in their heads. And you're involved in this fantasy. You are part of that narrative. You are part of the cast and crew. And you're supposed to play your role and play your, your lines uh, exactly. So I do feel Markle has him set up. She is ruling him. He's playing the role. He always had this problem, but she's assigned this to him is what I'm going to say. Yes, he's doing it, and he's doing it uh, with enthusiasm, it appears, but also she's gotten into his head so deeply for him to do this. That fire was always there, and she just put the, 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 the um, she put more gasoline on it, basically. It was always brewing, and she'd really lit that into a full flame. So everything is set like a stage show. All cast is already assigned. Harry was assigned this before she married him, okay? He got trapped, okay? So this is why I'm a little bit more generous with him because I think he had it under control until he got hooked up with her and all that came to the surface. I don't think that was his intentions when he was looking to find someone to marry. He married the wrong woman. Uh, had he married someone else, this would not be going down. We would not be seeing this, okay? That is my point. Uh, there is the, what this called obfasculation, which is really to create bewilderment, confusion, 
uh, and it turns into confabulation, which is made up stories, very fanatical. It's coming from the frontal lobe and the basal forebrain. It fills in the gaps in memories because Harry has always checked out. He's got BPD, borderline personality disorder. They tend to get very, they can get very psychotic. They can get so psychotic that they check out for days at a time. It can last for two or three days sometimes. Other people may not quite notice it, but maybe see that they're kind of like a little walking robot, kind of shut down, kind of quiet, really holding themselves up in their bedroom, not coming out. And then they end up filling in these, these, um, these uh, they don't have good memory. So their memory checks out. They can't remember anything during those time periods because they're mentally checked out. So what do they do? They confabulate. They make they fill in the gaps because they were checked out. Uh, that's that. It's kind of like a narc a narcissist um, amnesia. So then they fill in those gaps. So this this is all false memories. It's also very closely linked to schizophrenia cases. Okay. So kind of an example like how a narcissist like to mess with people with this obfasculation, which is to create confusion and bewilderment. Um, they like to play with your mind. They like to play with your mind, such as like, let's say you go on a date and uh, the guy says, hey, let's go to this rest nice Italian restaurant. You get there and he's like, oh, wow, I didn't know my ex-girlfriend was going to be working here tonight. And then so it creates chaos and drama. They live for it. They they need that dopamine fix. So that's why they do it. And they need that triangulation. Another example is they might say, you know, oh, I accidentally picked up your phone and, and I uh, saw your messages. Well, while they did that, they probably saw everything else too. But they'll deny it, right? Deny, deflect, you know. And then somehow blame you because you left your phone in a place you shouldn't have left it. So it will never be their fault. So he's on a he's on a media blitz. He's on a media blitz. A lot of it is confabulation. A lot of it is false memories with fill in gaps. Uh, plausible, something that's very plausible. And he is just an actor here, you guys. So this is why I am gentle, more gentle with him because he is the victim in the situation that became became like the, his abuser. Uh, it's kind of like, um, well, in a lot of cases, when a person gets bullied enough, they become the bully. And that's basically because they get so angry. That anger gets so fired up that they become they become the abuser. And that's basically what's happened with Harry. Uh, he should still be held accountable. Doesn't mean they should get off with it. But that's kind of how it happens. A lot of times the abuse becomes the abuser, just like the killer, you know, Copenberger. Uh, he was a bullied child. He was bullied. He was fat. He was overweight. Girls would um, laugh at him. Apparently, they would throw things at him. And then he lost weight, and then he became a bully. Uh, he became the abuser. So, you know, that's just kind of... And he's on the autism spectrum. Uh, so, anyways, he couldn't understand human emotion and people. Uh, that's why he went into psychology. He actually got a psychology degree. And so, anyways, I've been kind of covering his case on my other channel hero time with Andy if you're interested I did take down some other videos <clears throat> I did nail his character though and what kind of person he was but I did kind of mess up on the hoodie guy situation I will admit that but I got to be careful who I pin the point the finger at in very serious cases so anyways but in terms of the psychopathology I did get that I did nail that I will say that um, I'm really good at that's kind of where I'm gifted the most so anyways pointing at murder is a little different <laughs> Yes. All right. So I want to get some energy on how Harry is going to do uh, with his media blitz. I, I know that's not going to be received well. Let's face it. People are so overly tired of them. No one wants to see it anymore. I mean, we're so sick of this. Let's get some energy because I'm feeling the need. I need this. Come on, spirit guides and angels. I got to feel a little tingle on my head. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm not feeling so connected right now. I need to feel connected. Bring it in, bring it in. Okay, I'm feeling the tingle now. It doesn't take many, but yeah. I have to feel a little tingle tingle, and it does feel different. It feels like um, kind of like energy zaps in my head, like bzz, 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 bzz. and then sometimes it feels like this um, opening up of a lotus flower. Actually, it feels like little petals going like this. Bing, 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 bing. That's kind of how it feels. <clears throat> Anyways, here we go. And I hope you guys had a fun New Year's Eve. Yes. I did no drinking. I don't drink much. I had one cocktail the next day. So we have here the Queen of Wands in reverse. 
So I would say with the Queen of Wands in reverse, there's a lot of anger going in. He's going to be very angry. And so a lot of people are not going to feel too enthusiastic. I'd say the enthusiasm is going to be quite um, low. Um, he is going to take the actions, but it's not going to be received well. Uh, he's going to be sound like he's being very demanding. Uh, people are going to say he's jealous, that it's drama, drama, drama. He's throwing a temper tantrum. He's selfish. Uh, he's trying to find some level of importance that's going to be very argumentative. Uh, trying to find the spotlight. He wants the spotlight. Markle wants the spotlight. So I would say that this whole situation is geared and directed and produced by Meghan Markle because she is that queen of wands who wants to rise up but not able to rise up. So she's the one who's directing this whole risk taking. The queen of wands is quite the risk taker. She, she really has fiery passion, very independent, uh, really wants that, uh, that spotlight. Any, any wand... Wands like the spotlight. They like a lot of attention. Um, they're really good leaders. They're like natural born leaders, really. She wants to be a leader, so she's trying to get him to, she's trying to lead him because, and it's coming from a place of anger, anger and complete total frustration. Yes, it is. I'm going to just take the next position here. And then we have here the page of pentacles and reverse. This is my dual major. Uh, deck so it's everything has a face for the upright and reverse so that's what you're seeing here and so it's all red upright so it's page of want page of pentacles in reverse so that's a challenging position the challenging position is nobody's really interested uh they're gonna it's gonna it's gonna fail uh is a challenging position you know he knows it's high failure rate here uh they're gonna say that he's lazy that he's not he was never a good student he's not too bright he never did learn anything because the Page of Pentacles is all about being a student and growing yourself. Putting out good news is upright. Putting out good offerings is upright. This is in reverse. So he's putting out negative news. So it's more negative, 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 negative messaging is the problem. And people are going to say, well, he really is just a lazy guy and he procrastinated in doing so. So he's going to talk about how he's probably always wanted to and he procrastinated about it. Like, okay, you know, I always wanted to. I, this was always a problem, and I'm just now speaking out about it. Uh, I hid this for a long time. That goes back to what I was saying earlier is he always had this in him, but he was probably never going to speak about it, but he married Markle. It was always there. And challenging position was to bring it out, but it's not this negative messaging, uh, this negative project in essence, a negative goal. And building a portfolio in the negative sense is the challenging position for him because people don't really want his portfolio. People are not interested in that portfolio. People don't want him to have, that's a negative job right there. That's like a negative job because Page of Pentacles Upright is about a job, learning, apprenticeship. So he's kind of like a young bird of, of putting out negative messaging. So people are not going to think too highly of them because we have two, two cards in the reverse. No one's going to take kindly to it. Focal point we have here, yeah, King of Cups in reverse. His dad's going to be very angry with him. Uh, Harry did say he wants his father back. He wants his brother back. Well, he's not going to, it's not going to bode too well. King of Cups in reverse is he's emotionally drained. Um, basically, He's not going to enjoy the situation. He's not going to be tolerant of it. Let's put it that way. Because the King of Cups upright is very tolerant. So King Charles is going to lose his cool. Yeah. He's not going to feel like he was the emotional strong rock for Harry. He failed. It failed. It, trying to be the strong rock for Harry hailed. It failed. Excuse me. Failed. Hailed. Failed. Yeah. It's, he's being snowed on. All right. Um. Yeah. So anyways... Uh, it's also a position where Harry could feel like he wasn't loved by his father. He never felt truly loved. He's going to say that he loved William more than him. He never really loved me. My dad loved William more. Yeah. My dad was never truly kind to me uh, or showed empathy for me or was never very friendly to me. He wasn't considerate of me. So that's what he's going to say about uh, King Charles. He's going to say some really negative stuff. That he just was only the father figure to William. That he lacked with him. Oh, boy. And what's what's not serving him is having the King of Swords speak to him. He wants to talk to him. He needs to talk to me. And 
that's just not, it's, it's not serving and trying to talk isn't happening. So that's them, their lack of response. Uh, that's coming out now that the family's not responding. They're, they refuse to talk about it. Uh, so he's feeling like, yeah, they just seem to want this narrative of making us, us seem like the villains in this situation is what he said. They're not talking and it just uh, because it doesn't serve him because he feels like, you know, emotional manipulation here. He's not going to talk to me now. So that's kind of putting the blame on his father here. He's definitely going to throw um, King Charles under the bus. Just telling you, he's really going to go for his dad's jugular here. Definitely going for the jugular. Then we have here, it's the wrong path with the fool in reverse. So yeah, he's taking the wrong missed up. It's the traitor. It's the traitor position as we know. He left loyalty behind. He took the risk and he's failing. Bad idea, bad plan, bad direction. Yeah, I'd say so. And he knows it too. Subconsciously, he knows it and that's the root of the problem here is Harry took the misstep. He, did, he left the loyalty and he wants the loyalty back, but he can't get it back. He says, I want my brother and my father back but they won't talk to me, nor will they watch the Netflix show. And they're pissing and moaning about that too. I'm sure they had their aides and their people and their secretaries take cliff notes and give them the concerning news. No, they're not going to sit down and watch it. They're too busy. They got better things to do. And I don't blame them. Why would they sit down? So they just got the cliff notes. And so Harry's drowning. Harry's drowning. He knows he's drowning in his own misstep. Uh, and he wants to get back where he was. He wants to go home. There's Harry the Hermit right there. There's Harry. Uh, he's He's gone inward. He's done this dark night of the soul with the Hermit. And he did distance himself from everybody. So he's gotten some introspection. He's having to do some self-reflection, solitude, soul searching. He's withdrawn from his family. His, fa his dad has withdrawn from him too. So basically, he's feeling very vulnerable. It's a very vulnerable, wounded person. A lot of times, a hermit is. And they're trying to safeguard themselves. So Harry's trying to safeguard the path that he chose with that lantern right there. He's trying to safeguard that path. I think that's why he's lighting the path back to his father, trying to light his path back to the love of his father. Um, he knows that path was wrong, and he's drowning now because of his own decisions. And that's why he's gone into retraction. He, he lit that path. He lit that path, lit that manipulation and created this whole situation. He's also lit the path to negative news messaging. He also lit the path to marrying the wrong woman who is very angry and very domineering. He married a very domineering woman. You become like the partner you keep and the person you align yourself with. Uh, especially for a man, it can really make or break a man's career. <clears throat> here we have here temperance in reverse. So there's that devil energy that comes out because of lack of ability to maintain your inner calm and collectedness within yourself. Uh, he was unable to get the opposing forces to come in balance. He couldn't get them to talk. I can't get them to talk to me. I can't get that enmeshment. I can't get them to join my low vibe consciousness here. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in materialism because there's a lot of devil energy there and he's faced with just dark clouds now. Since he can't calm himself from within, the clouds are looming over him and people are going to say that about him. People are going to say, wow, he really is a dark cloud. Does he really have to come to the coronation? Because he's going to ruin the joy of the coronation for King Charles right here. It doesn't serve King Charles to have a dark cloud at the coronation. And so it should be interesting to, to see what he decides because he knows that's like inviting this negative vibe to the coronation. So this is going to be a problem coming up. And they're aiming for purity. There's that those tulips, the white flowers they represent, trying to aim for emotional purity, uh, trying to purify themselves. But really, they're not able to because everywhere they go, they're just a dark cloud. So, yeah, it's that victimology that we know. You know, that's that false images, false perceptions. He's always been a petulant, can never get balanced. And now he wants to negotiate. I wish they would talk to me so we can work this out. They don't want to. They don't want to. They won't talk to him. It doesn't serve. He can't get a communication because he's trying to get, he's trying to purify himself. He wants to free himself. There's that butterfly there. 
He wants to free himself from his own emotional dark clouds that's always hanging over him. So this book is all about his, his depression and misery, his emotional issues within the family, how he had a devil enmeshment with them, uh, pointing out their dark aspects, and painting himself as he could never become balanced within the, within the system. Um, he could never maintain a sense of calm. So there's anxiety there. Very anxious. Um, he's trying to... He cannot avoid the extreme emotions. Upright, the temperance can avoid extreme emotions. Harry's not capable of doing that. Harry's also not capable of taking the middle road. He's all about disharmony here. He cannot balance and moderate himself either. Outside influences affecting him. We have here the tower crashing to the, to the worst. No, is this upright? Let me see. Yeah, this is the upright. So the outside influences is the tower taken down the royal family. Everybody knows he's like he's trying to take down the royal family. There's the royal crown right there on top. So he and he wants to take them down and then he wants to rebuild himself back in the family after he destroyed them and took them down. Public public uh you know, public shaming, but now I want back and I want to rebuild. I want to take those ashes and rebuild with you. Now, now that I've taken you down, can we all forgive and forget and just pretend nothing happened? How borderline is that? I hate to say it, but that's what a borderline does. They don't want to take accountability after they've done something. Let's pretend it didn't happen. They don't apologize. Same thing with the narcissist. Okay, yeah, I did that, but let's forget about it and let's just build now. Let's just forget like nothing like that happened. Can we just carry on now? Don't hold me accountable. Let's not talk about it. Let's just ignore it and dust it under the rug. And let's just build ourselves back up and put on some new snake skin here and rebuild ourselves. Because that's kind of like shedding of a, a snake. Uh, like shed, shed the old, bring in the new. Uh, I took down, I wanted to shed this family of this problem that we have. And now we can grow a new skin together. Uh, it's kind of like how I see the the tower is like a, a snake, a snake shedding itself and then wanting to recolorize themselves into something different and better uh, after they've taken down all the problems. And they have this inner knowing that they like to destroy with that lightning bolt, create a shocking, shocking change. Uh, and they, they get a thrill out of that shocking change. So people are going to see him as sort of a tower card taking down, trying to build himself up. That's also very narky energy. I'm going to take you down so I can build myself up. So it's not going to go over well. Um, the hopes and fears. Yeah, he wants to be back in, in the royal family. That to me, the chariot's always him, Harry, always driving back in. He wants to drive back in. He wants to come in for the coronation. He definitely does. He wants in. He does not want to be left out. He wants to win. He wants to win on his terms. It's very goal-driven, the chariot. And he's ready to drive in. Please, please, please let me drive in. Don't leave me out. Fear of abandonment. I don't want to be left out. You're going to trigger me. You're going to trigger my wife, too. She's already angry, bitch. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, very goal-driven. And he thinks that they're going to win also, more than likely, because they are goal-driven. And they usually are the ones to succeed. And he wants to be successful, too. And the only way he can drive forward with his life and when is by being through association, because that's the only thing that gives him strength, the strength and calmness of the lion. Yes, that, that lion is nothing but strength, and that is the only strength he has in his association is with the family. That's why he's got to rebuild with them. That's why, he, that's why he's not temperate right now. He's falling apart. He needs to purify himself. He, he knows he needs to purify himself in order to get back in. But I don't think see him apologizing. He's not going to apologize. Not now. Uh, next card. The final outcome. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Markle. Markle's direction here. Queen of Pentacles. She's being very resourceful. And so she's the one who's very confident. Uh, she, she feels that she can do a lot with a little. Uh, Markle wants, he's doing it because of his wife. She's in control here. She needs her resources. Keep the resources going. We need to come back. So it's all for money. Uh, she likes to appear as though she's down to earth and creating comfortable spaces. She's all about her materialism and her comforts. Uh, and she just wants to be that, con that confidant. That is Harry's confidant right there. 
trust me, I'm the one that's going to get you this practical life. Uh, I'm the one with that's good with kids and home and garden. No, she's not. But she likes that appearance of it. So it's for Markle. But he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. Knight of Cups in reverse. Yeah, that's the reverse position. He has he drank her punch. He drank her toxic poison punch. And he's been poisoned now. He's been totally poisoned. He went, he loved her, he picked the wrong one. He chose her. He chose her knowing that she was angry, knowing that she was a domineering you-know-what. He drank the punch, and now he wants to ride out of there. He wants to ride in the opposite direction of her. He wants, you know, he the horse is still heading her way. Look at that. The horse is still leading her way because he's been told to do so is how I feel about this. But emotionally, he's he's got his back to her. But he's going to do it anyways because she told him to. And the horse is very fast momentum. Um, the horse is all about freedom. So she did give him a sense of freedom. He got out because he wanted to. He was already angry and she brought that out in him. But now, but emotionally, he's not there. Emotionally, his heart's not in it, in essence. His heart's definitely not in it. Uh, he knows it's grandstanding. He knows he's being, he's, it's basically lies. Um, he also knows basically that he's about to hit a wall and he wants to give up. He's lazy. He's lazy. He cannot keep her happy in comforts. He doesn't have what it takes. He can't stand on his own. He can't stand on his own. He needs the royal family. He needs the institution. And she knows he can't stand on his own also. Because the Knight of Pentacles is someone who t totally cannot stand on his own. And they know that they're going to have to give up. But they want to ride forward with fast momentum. They know they need to keep doing it. We got to keep doing it to keep her comfortable. Uh, so she can feel like she's the queen of queen of her own castle here. Uh, I need to keep doing it for, for Megan. I got to do it for my family. I got to do it for Megan. I got to do it for Megan. But I'm not in love with her. I don't really love her. I really don't care. That's like a Knight of Cups in reverse right here on the Knight of Pentacles horse. He doesn't love her. He doesn't want to give her any love. Basically, he's feeling mood swings, fanaticism. He's heartbroken. He needs other people to emotionally regulate him. He needs his family to emotionally get him back into a healthy place. So that's how that reads. Just by looking just at the imagery there. <clears throat> Let's get to the bottom of the deck. Oh, there he is. Full exile. He knows that he's facing full exile and total utter misery. The hermit in reverse is paranoia. So there's that psychotic mind, the paranoia. There's that scatterbrained where he's filling in all the memory gaps with confabulations of lies and made up stories because he doesn't remember very much. Uh, he's too restricted in his views. Uh, a recluse. He's got to go into recluse. So he's not going to be happy with this media blitz at all. Uh, he's, he's, he's fearing what's there. He's having a hard time uh, looking at it. And he's paralyzed by fear. He's absolutely paralyzed by fear. Very antisocial position. He's going to probably lock himself up for a while. He's going to feel very rejected. And he's going to feel like he's very damaged. Very, very damaged. Oh my God, I'm facing complete exile. I want my family back. I want my dad's love back. I wish he would talk to me. So that's how it is. It's just going to get worse. It's not going to get better. Just as we we all can, we all know that energetically. I know everybody feels it energetically. We don't even need cards for it. We know how it's going. But this just kind of gets down to the finer details here. But we all do know what's coming in. And in the center of the deck, yeah. This is basically the Hierophant in reverse, not pleasing the structures of society, family values in reverse with the Hierophant in reverse. Yeah. So upright Hierophant is commitment and communication of the institution. The institution has set ways. He doesn't like the set ways. The institution is all about, you know, it, this is all about political, social, family, economic conformity. It's the marriage card, too. He knows he has to get out of his marriage. Uh, it's having the same value system, uh, upright. It's having the same value system and the same spiritual path as others. 
and also able to listen and take advice, it's in reverse. Harry's always been the rebel in the family. Always the rebel in the family. That's why she lit the fire that was already that was already there. She just had to light that fire and it just went off into a blaze. And that's why he's just mirroring her as a narcissist. He's not a he's not really if he, he's got he's got some he's got some spectrum of it, definitely, but I don't paint him as a total narcissist, but he's got high covert narcissist traits. Very high. To the point where he's got his toe on the damn line. Uh, but I think he's hardcore board, male borderline personality disorder of the um, petulant variant. There are four variants. So he's the very angry one who's always going to be the outcast in the family uh, because he's always because he's always been this Harry the Hermit, the lonely, isolated, never loved. I wasn't truly loved as a family. I don't think my dad ever nurtured me. So he's always been feeling like the outcast. The higher font in reverse is basically nonconformity, alternative lifestyle. He left. Part of the reason why he wanted to leave was for his alternative lifestyle. And you know what that is here, right? I've talked about it before. And that is his sexual fluidity. He has It's guilt and shame associated with this position as well. So his sexual fluidity and his alternative lifestyle is, um, did not agree with the rigid rules of the Hierophant upright. Yeah. So this is not conformity. He didn't, he could not conform to the rigid rules. And so he, he couldn't come out of the closet for his family, basically. And Markle allowed it. Yes, the judgment. He probably figured because of the rigid rules, he couldn't get forgiveness or acceptance with the judgment card. Yeah, which is not probably true, but that's a perception on his end. And so that's why he does what he does. Yeah. Um, judgment upright is about letting go of grudges. Grudges within yourself, typically. He could not let go of the grudges. He could not conform. He was just, you know, he knows he needs to forgive his family. But he's just got this, this rebellion here. And the only way for him to move forward is, forgive, is through forgiveness and love. And the judgment is about mainly feeling vulnerable. And that's going back to what I was saying earlier. Uh, there's this, this vulnerability with this card. Narcissists don't do vulnerability. They don't like doing apologies either. Apologies is very difficult. He's going to be, he's going to reject it. He's going to reject forgiveness. He also knows also this means is they may never, they may never forgive him. Uh, rejection, rebellion of forgiveness. So, uh, the idea of him ever being forgiven is not going to happen. They'll tolerate him. He knows it. He knows he's never going to be forgiven. And yet he's had that within himself all along. And now the shoes are on the other foot, I feel, with this. So, yeah, kind of kind of sad. It's really sad. The whole thing is sad and so on. It, it, none of this needed to happen. So we're really with, with the judgment in reverse. Back to loneliness. More loneliness, because we got this whole lonely, lonely Harry here. Lonely Harry. So basically, there's going to be the inner critic, self-doubt, self-loathing. He was always self-doubt, self-loathing, and had his inner critic on fire when he was within the family structure. And he's kind of stuck in the past. Stuck in the past over how unhappy he was as a child within the structure of the society, within the, um, the hierarchy of the family. So always unhappy and um, just very self-loathing. He was always beating himself up about being the spare. He doesn't like being the spare. He wants to be top ranking. That's the problem. That's that jealousy, envy, rage. He wants to be at the top of the hierarchy because the Hierophant is the hierarchy card. And he was always unwilling to take advice because it's in reverse. Never could listen or take advice. And they tried to. They tried to. They tried to give him this forgiveness heart. Well, you were just born second, yada, yada. He could never handle it. He could never get a grip on it. So that's how I see it. I hope you guys enjoy this read, and thank you for watching. And until next time, like and subscribe. Bye, you guys.